Today I'm on Grand Street in Maspeth, Queens, at the location of what was once a baseball stadium known as the Long Island Baseball Grounds. Right where you see the car park that is now being built, that was once the home of Major League Baseball, and also a place where many future Baseball Hall of Famers played. The history of this baseball stadium can be traced all the way back to 1885 when the Skelly Baseball Club played their games here. It is possible that the grounds existed prior to 1885, however I was not able to find anything definitive to confirm that in newspaper archives. Aside from mentions of baseball in 1885, there is also a newspaper report where the owner of the Skelly Baseball Club, Thomas Skelly, assaulted another man right here on Grand Street and threatened to shoot anyone who came near him. There are only a few reports of baseball from the year of 1885 when the Skelly Club called the park home, most of which revolve around free exhibition games that were played at the end of the year featuring the New York National League team. One of these games was actually against the Skelly Club itself, and upwards of 5,000 fans attended. The New York team that played the exhibition games on these grounds in 1885 and 1886 would eventually be known as the New York Giants, and later the modern-day San Francisco Giants. Hall of Famers who played in those games on this ballpark included Jim O'Rourke, Monty Ward, Roger Connor, Buck Ewan, Mickey Welsh, and Tim Keefe. Beginning in 1886, the old baseball stadium here was taken over by the Long Island Baseball Club, hence the name the Long Island Baseball Grounds. However, they only played 12 games in the Eastern League before quitting. They did, however, continue to play baseball for the rest of the season. Starting in 1887, the baseball grounds became the Sunday home of the Cuban Giants a team of African-American players who became known as one of the most famous baseball teams of that era. Future Hall of Famers Frank Grant and Sol White played on the Cuban Giants between the years of 1887 to 1893. And I do have to give a shout out to a player who joined the Cuban Giants just after they had stopped playing at the Long Island Baseball Grounds on a permanent basis in 1893. Bud Fowler, who joined the Giants soon after 1893, is going to be a 2022 inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Fowler became the first African American to play professional baseball when he played on the all-white team known as the Keokuk Hawkeyes. Fully 60 years before Jackie Robinson was believed to have broken the color barrier in baseball, Bud Fowler played for several teams in the 1880s and 1890s. While he obviously encountered problems along the way, with teammates refusing to play with him, Bud Fowler played for 10 years on professional and semi-professional ball clubs, almost always breaking the colour barrier for those clubs and the leagues that they played in. Jackie Robinson obviously has a place in history as becoming the first African American to play Major League Baseball, thereby integrating baseball from that point forward. But there were early pioneers such as Bud Fowler and Moses Fleetwood Walker, 
along with his brother Waldy, who played for the Toledo Blue Stockings. All three men playing professional baseball 60 years before Jackie Robinson did so. In 1888, a series was contested between the Cuban Giants, the New York Gorhams, and the Pittsburgh Keystones to determine the coloured baseball champions. Due to the passage of time, there are disputes as to who the champions were. What is known is that between 1887 and 1889, either the Giants or the Gorhams were the coloured world champions. And it is certainly likely that the Giants were champions for all three of those years. In the 1888 season, where championships were played right here at this ballpark in Maspeth, the record of the Giants would appear unmatched. However, there are gaps in the results in the newspaper archives. The Brooklyn Gladiators played two Sunday games at the Long Island grounds after ditching their home at Ridgewood Park. That was the ballpark that I previously covered where the Brooklyn Dodgers played for three seasons. The first of these games in Maspeth was against the Columbus Solons. The Brooklyn club was leading 13-8 to but were forced to forfeit the game when they apparently ran out of baseballs. If you want to pause the video right here, you can do so, and read the article that is now appearing on the screen, detailing this incident. Oh, and why not hit the like button while you do so? The last professional game played at this ballpark occurred on August the 3rd, 1890, when the Gladiators lost to the Toledo Mormies by a score of 9-2. to two. That was the last Major League Baseball game played at the Long Island Baseball Grounds. In 1890, right across the street at Feldman's Park, a game took place between a feminine nine and a masculine nine. I covered this story in my Feldman's Park video, which you can find a link to in the description. Due to the success of the event, where the women ran around the bases in their short skirts, another event of that ilk was arranged for the following week at the Long Island Baseball Grounds. The Red Stockings and the Black Stockings, both feminine nines, were scheduled to play in that game. But I can find no newspaper article recording the result of that match. In this video, you will also see a business called Feldman's Lumber, which has been here since the 1920s. But whether or not they're connected to the old baseball stadium across the road, I'm not sure. The Cuban Giants remained at the Long Island grounds for Sunday games, playing against other teams comprised of African-American players back in the day, as well as exhibition games against a whole variety of all-white teams. In 1891, the Giants played here against the Cincinnati Kelly's Killers, who were owned by King Kelly. Hall of Famer Kelly himself did not play in that particular game. Instead, he managed from the sidelines. As late as 1893, we can still find games registered in newspapers of the day. And in fact, the Cincinnati Reds played here in the year of 1893. However, this was not the Cincinnati Reds. This was the all-female version of that team. After 1893, though, there is no longer any mention of the baseball grounds in any newspaper of the time. It was known that local police justice Monteverdi cracked down hard on entertainment establishments in 1893. And it is quite likely that rather than fight him, the ballpark owners simply abandoned the site and moved elsewhere. Despite the crackdown though, it does appear that Monteverdi's own park, where baseball was also played, a little further up on Grand Street, seemed to escape these harsh measures. We do know that baseball continued for many years after 1893 at both Monteverdi's Grand Street Park and also at Feldman's Park, 
which was also located on Grand Street. But what happened to the Long Island baseball grounds will remain a mystery. What we do know, though, was that more than 130 years ago, this area right here once hosted many a baseball Hall of Famer, and likewise, many famous teams of the day. The Long Island Baseball Grounds on Grand Street in Masbeth, Queens. <laughs> 